Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the shooting show, and welcome again to this week's program. We've got a beautiful day to be out here shooting. A little warm, but I tell you what, it's still a great day to be shooting. We hope that everyone had a great 4th of July. Uh, we certainly did here. And I tell you what, it's a time to reflect on the values and on the reasons that our country was founded in the beginning in the first place. We have some great features for you today. I think you're really going to enjoy our program. And let me remind you folks, we're starting to hear from old people all over the country on different matters, uh, certainly anything you have to talk about. If I can, I'm willing to listen. But if there's a feature or you have a special match, be it black powder or uh, a tactical match or an IPSC match, uh, Kurt Vickers, who our associate producer, is located in the Northeast and he can cover some things in that area. And of course, we'll travel uh, as far as we can here from Northwest Louisiana to cover something of interest that we think you folks at home might like to see. Anyway, we're so glad to have you with us. I think we've got another great show for you. Let's let another shooting show begin. Well, we'll load our Colt Sporter. Remember, this is not an AR-15 anymore. It doesn't have the bayonet load. Our Colt Sporter. Push our safety off, and let's see about that water jug down there at about 85 yards. Now friends, the first gun we're going to look at today is a new gun imported by European American Armory, the good folks down in Florida. And this is a Sabati. Uh, it's called an 1822. And <laughs> I, I can imagine why it's called an 1822 because it, it has a lot of similarities to the Ruger 1022. And in fact, this particular gun has a lot of similarities to the Clark Squirrel Special, which we featured on our program a while back. It has a very heavy barrel. It looks to be about 18 or so inches in length. And, uh, and I say similar to the Ruger, it even uses the Ruger magazines. Uh, it comes with a ram line, or oh, I think it holds 10 or 15 uh, cartridges here, a ram line magazine that will fit the 1022 or the 7722. So, uh, which is really an advantage if you ask me because you can always get magazines for, for these little guns. Now this is in fact a target grade uh, 22. It is not an expensive uh, a rifle by any means. Uh, it's going to retail probably for around $200. Uh, maybe a little more, maybe a little less depending upon what area you're in. But it appears to be well made. Uh, the wood is finished well. Uh, one thing I will mention to you uh, the safety works backwards from uh, the way that we're normally accustomed to a safety. Or well, we normally think of the safety pushing from uh, from right to left to push it off. Well, this is just backwards. You, uh, it's safe when it's uh, uh, on the left side to push it off. You'll push it from left to right, in fact. But uh, it does have a, a relatively smooth action, and uh, there's some chance that uh, the good folks at Clark's Custom Gun Works in Keithville, Louisiana, uh, they're working with one of these guns now. They may have an accuracy package they're going to put together. Now, first of all, we realize that we're, oh, probably $400 away from the Clark uh, Ruger Squirrel Special, uh, and you can't expect a gun that's going to retail for around $200 to really shoot say half inch groups like the Clark gun will at 50 yards, uh, sometimes even less, but uh, it is an awfully good place to start. We have a target down here set up at about 60 yards and we have a, a Bushnell 3 to 9 scope on this little gun. So let's shoot a couple of groups with it from our double sandbag rest here on our, on our new, <laughs> new uh, uh, bench rest table and uh, which my nephew and I built a few days ago and it's just as handy as can be. It's uh, inexpensive, and if anyone would like to know how to build an inexpensive table like this, we'll, we'll certainly give you the plans. It's so simple and so easy, and it works like a charm. Now, another thing that I think is real important, we'll put our gun down here. We have our spotting scope here, and uh, so we can see on our target without having to walk down there every time. And this is just a little spotting scope from Kmart. Uh, a good friend of ours has loaned this one to us, but it works real 
uh, really well. You can see a fly out there at 100 yards on the paper, and I think that's good enough. And this makes your, your time on the range a lot easier because you don't have to, uh, certainly on a hot day like today, you don't want to be walking up and down these hills or back and forth. You want to shoot your gun and remain calm and be able to see just where the heck you in fact shot. But uh, uh, let's shoot our little Sabati, I believe that's how you pronounce it, our, our 22 semi-automatic on our target down there. And let's just see what it'll do with a variety of ammunition. Now friends, of course, the uh, uh, we have a variety of 22 ammunition here. Uh, we have some CCI green tag, which is a target cartridge. We have the CCI mini mags and the small game bullets. And we also have some federal high power ammunition, of which 22, uh, uh, which is very common. Uh, these four varieties here, and that's just what we happen to have handy today. But uh, I think it'll give us some sort of of a reasonable idea of just how this little gun will shoot. And on a 22 long rifle, I really like to do accuracy tests out at about uh, 50 or no more than 60 or 75 yards at max because uh, of the characteristics of the cartridge itself. Once your uh, 22 long rifle gets past, say, 50 yards, you're starting to lose velocity. You really don't have the accuracy potential uh, because you just don't have the velocity to start with on the uh, 22 long rifle bullet. So for what we're talking about, and a, a lot of people are going to use these guns to hunt squirrels with, uh, things like that, uh, plinking. Uh, uh, it may have some potential in this new shooting game where they shoot these target dots uh, at 50 yards. I tell you what, it looks pretty darn good in our preliminary test we've run with it. So uh, I think you're looking at a maybe an entry level target gun, a semi-automatic with potential to be really accurized up. But anyway, before I say what it will or won't do, let's shoot the gun several times and just see what it looks like. We're gonna load five of the uh, CCI small game bullet, uh, 22 long rifle in our magazine here. And we've had really good luck with this bullet in the past. It has a different profile uh, from some of the other 22 long rifle bullets. Uh, and it, it does have a good effect on game. Uh, it's real consistent. And it has also shown up in several guns we've tried to be extremely accurate. So, uh, so let's shoot it first. And then we'll shoot some of these others and see just in fact what our body today will do. Again, from my hands today. Now, then, of course, the magazine goes in. The magazine will just uh, very much like the Ruger 1022. And I'm sure there are enough differences in, in this gun and the Ruger uh, so they won't get sued over it. But uh, those of us who are familiar with the Ruger 1022 will surely be uh, familiar with the way this little Sabati works. So we're going to pull our bolt handle, go ahead and load the gun, pull our bolt handle all the way back and put our safety on. Now then. For those of you who are unfamiliar with using a double sandbag rest, we'll move our spotting scope up here just a little further out of the way. You never want the front sandbag under the barrel, you want it under the stock here. And of course you want your rear bag, you can have it for that matter anywhere under the stock, even back here and behind, but you want a real solid uh, double rest so you can take out uh, the movement or flexibility that you may have in your arms and shoulders, you really want that rifle to be solid so you can pull the trigger without anything, any movement, just or as little movement as possible. So we're going to shoot this little gun, and I have my hearing protection in, and you know, even with a 22 uh, rifle, it's still a good idea to have your hearing protection, and of course, we always wear eye protection. The 22 is not that loud, but it has a sharp noise, and even prolonged 22 rimfire shooting can serve to damage your hearing. And as you folks have heard me say 50 times, if you've heard me once, we don't want to leave the range hurting anywhere, our ears or our eyes or, or anything else. We just need to think safety and caution and good shooting rules. So, all right, well, let's shoot our little gun at our target here at about 60 yards. And we're going to see 
just what in fact it'll do. My hearing protection is in good. And we've got the scope lined up real good. And we'll sit here. We'll push our safety off. Let's see. There it is. All right. Get a good solid grip. Now then. Okay. And remember, when you're bench resting, when you're testing a gun like this, take your time. Don't rush it. be sure. Is that five already? Got one left. Yeah, that's five. Okay, we'll take a look at our target. In fact, what we're going to do is we're not going to bore you folks with watching me squeeze off uh, several different uh, uh, brands of ammunition. There are several different types. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and shoot uh, several more groups, and then we're going to uh, go down and look at our target. My well, friends, we brought our target up here on the stand so uh, you can get a look at it. And I tell you what, our Sabati looks pretty darn good. In fact, for, again, for what it is, uh, our champion as far as the accuracy goes today is the CCI small game bullet. Now realize we're at 60 yards here and that's a 78 hundredths of an inch just uh, a little bit over a three-quarter inch group we measure with our caliper here uh, and that's pretty darn good. You've got three in one hole and two in the other and measured center to center of the furthest holes apart we've got a 78 hundredths of an inch. All right our uh, our target ammunition did pretty well. This is the, these two groups are the CCI green tag of target ammunition. And uh, I've got a half inch group before and then I had a flyer here. And on the other uh, target group there, the target ammunition, I had four in a real tight group and I had one other flyer. But we still have, the top one is a 1.3 inch group. The uh, lower one here is 1.84 inch, uh, inch group for five shots. Now then, the Mini Mags, which is a more high performance 22 long rifle, it didn't like them as well. It went into two and a half inches. Uh, if it had been a handgun, I'd say it was great, but <laughs> for our, our bull barrel or heavy barrel rifle, that, this is really not, uh, not that good when we know what it will shoot with ammunition it likes. And here's the Federal High Power, five shots and 1.6 inches. So, uh, none of these are, are really bad targets and realize that every other brand of ammunition we can come with may shoot slightly different But uh, this is a representation of the four brands that we tried today Now then friends looking at uh, this body in comparison to our Remington 552 uh, Semi-automatic rifle you can see just how much uh, Thicker and heavier the two barrels are as compared to each other the Sabati, of course, the barrel is about, all oh, roughly nine-tenths of an inch in diameter, whereas the Remington is about, about five-eighths of an inch in diameter out at the muzzle. So this will give you some idea of just how heavy, in fact, the uh, Sabati is as compared to our basic Remington. Well, friends, I'll tell you what, this little gun looks awfully good. We chronographed uh, the Sabati as comparison or in comparison to our Remington. Uh, 552 a few minutes ago and even though the barrel is considerably shorter on this particular gun uh, velocities were comparable with the loads that we tried so apparently the tolerances in the barrel are pretty good uh, held to a minimum well uh, this is one of those guns that uh, if you're looking for uh, as I said earlier an entry-level uh, target semi-automatic uh, 22 rifle well this would be one 
I believe you'd do well to look at. It is relatively inexpensive for what it is, and I'll just bet, I don't know for sure, but I'll bet the good folks at Clark's Custom Guns are going to be offering an accuracy package for these, and, and I'll tell you what, knowing our friends uh, uh, down at Clark's, I'll bet you they can really make these little guns stand up and sing. But uh, as they are, this gun is, is reliable. You can get magazines almost anywhere. Remember, the 1022 or 7722 Ruger magazines do fit it. And it's just really a neat package. We have, have really enjoyed the shooting the little gun. They come without sight, so you're going to need to purchase a scope. But they have a simple rail mount uh, on the top there that uh, are... The scope mounts are available almost everywhere. So uh, this is one I believe I would take a look at. It is certainly a worthwhile addition to anyone's 22 uh, rifle battery, and I think you'll uh, be pleased that you did. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Awesome firepower, precision rifle skills. That's what you'll find along with lots more in these two great new videos, Marine Corps Firepower and Marine Corps Silent Drill Team. See an actual firepower demonstration of the latest Marine Corps weapons of the infantry, including the M220 Echo Tow Missile System, grenade launchers, mortars, and lots more. Plus the Marine Corps Silent Drill Team. An incredible display of precision rifle handling skills by the most respected and admired rifle squad in the world. Two great new videos for one low price. Just $19.95 through this special TV offer. Marine Corps Firepower and Marine Corps Silent Drill Team. Two videos for the price of one. Call and order yours right now. Call toll-free with your credit card ready, 1-800-942-8273. By ordering today, you'll receive this 32-page gun video catalog absolutely free. So order now, 1-800-942-8273. Call now. Well, friends, the next thing we're going to do today, we're going to shoot the uh, AR-15. Let me rephrase that, the Colt Sporter. Like I said, it doesn't have the bayonet lug. But see, I didn't have a problem with it when it was called the AR-15. But uh, some of the folks uh, in the media and the government do. So uh, we have a very fine uh, basic rifle here from Colt. We also have our terrific Mini-14 in caliber 223 from Ruger. So we're going to be comparing these two guns in, in just a few minutes. And as you can see from the uh, photograph there, and certainly uh, how I'm holding them in my hands, they're similar in size. The uh, Mini-14 has an 18-inch barrel. The Colt Sporter has a 20-inch barrel, a couple of inches difference there. And we're going to be shooting these guns from our uh, double sandbag rest in just a few moments. But you know, friends, I really don't think there's a thing in the world wrong with you or I owning one of these military-type rifles. Uh, it is in caliber 223, which is, of course, your military caliber. Uh, these Colts have become as reliable, uh, probably, as a semi-automatic rifle can be. They're just terrific guns. It looks like a military gun because it is very similar to the gun that the U.S. Army uses. You know, I heard a psychologist, or at least she said she was a psychologist, say recently, said, well, why not restrict the population to the guns that uh, the people had during the American Revolution to the black powder single shots. Well, where she missed her point of argument was the population had very similar guns to the military at that time because you know what? 
if the American population in 1776 had not had guns similar to what the military at that time had, they could not have had a successful revolution. It couldn't have happened. And you know, friends, I think one of the great things that have happened uh, or has happened uh, in history is the birth of the United States of America. And I don't think anybody's more patriotic than I am. But you know, we talk about in our videos some things that we think need fixing, because we've got some things here in our country that we definitely, uh, definitely need to take a look at, because uh, if we don't, if we lose the family, if we lose our rights to own firearms, if we lose our rights to think and speak freely, well, we won't have a free country anymore. They'll call it the United States, but it won't be the same thing. So, friends, we'd like for you to watch our video now, and we'll talk about uh, how to order one and, and some favors we need to ask after it gets through playing. So, anyway, here is our, our new video, down to you and me. Hope you enjoy it. I'm proud to be an American, thank God our country's strong. But some time ago, you know, it occurred to me, there's something going wrong. My granddad fought against tyranny, so we could all be free. I'm afraid, my friends, his fight has passed down to you and me, down to you and me. We got people telling us what to do We don't even know our name We're just a number on some little card And I think that's a shame If George and Abe could see us now Bet they'd both agree This is not exactly what they had in mind The land of liberty Sweet land of liberty Oh, I love to hear my Harley run I like being free to live out my dreams And I want to have a little fun I want to hold on to what we got To see to shine and see I'm afraid my friend the fight has passed Down to you and me Oh, down to you and me Politicians and bureaucrats all telling us what to do And they don't seem at all concerned about what they put us through They tax and spend like there's no end, throw it all away Just keep in mind there'll come a time when nobody's left to pay Oh, nobody's left to pay there's people that want to lock us up Just to keep us away from harm They want a police state to give us orders But they can get us unarmed There's folks that say they know the truth Well, they saw it on TV We got some boys on Capitol Hill Don't want to have us free Now they don't want to have us free Being free to live out my dreams And I want to have a little fun I want to hold on to what we've got We'll see to shine and see I'm afraid, my friends, the fight is passed Down to you and me Oh, down to you and me Friends, we hope you enjoyed our video. We put a lot of hard work into making it, and we'd like to ask you a small favor. 
If you would, please call your local radio station and ask them if they would play our new uh, selection here, Down to You and Me, by yours truly, Johnny Rowland. It's doing well in many areas of the country. People are playing it at different radio stations. And we did an all-night radio show here uh, oh, last week, in fact. And people were so nice, they called from all over the country in support of not only our song, but also our project. Because, you know, friends, every time that this song is played on the radio or every time this video runs somewhere, it brings up the shooting show. We're able to reach into areas that we're not already as a television program. It gets people's curiosity up. It makes them wonder, well, just what is the shooting show? What's it, uh, what's, is this about? Or how long has this been on? Or how can we watch it? So it's so important. You can help us by asking your local radio station to please play our new song. It's on the Tennessee Star Tracks Sizzling Summer Singles 2. That's the name of the CD. It's on that, and they most of the stations around the country already do have it. We really do need your help because it's so expensive doing what we do here at the shooting show. It's so much hard work involved in it, and we need every little bit of help we can possibly get. You can also help by calling Country Music Television in Nashville, Tennessee, and that number is area 615-871-5830. Again, area 615-871-5830. You can also help us by calling the Nashville Network, and that number is area 615-883-7000. Again, area 615-883-7000. And friends, every time that our video can air, it brings more interest for the shooting show, for our project, for everything that we're doing. So please, if you can, please help us. Now, if you'd like to order a copy of the video, we also have a cassette uh, with 10 of my songs on that performed uh, by yours truly, myself, Johnny Rowland. And the cost of the uh, video is $17.95. The cost of the cassette tape with 10 songs on it, including our latest one, Down to You and Me, is $9.95. And you can write to us at the shooting show, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana. That zip code is 71104. And we'll take a check or money order, whatever you can send there. We'll be very pleased to ship you out a copy of our video or a copy of our cassette tape, or both of them for that matter. And we really do appreciate everyone who has ordered those things from us. Well, there's one more thing. Uh, we have an official cap now, the shoot and show cap. And you know, if you'd like to walk around town or walk around on the shooting range or wherever else with one of the shoot and show caps on here, uh, we can certainly fix you up. We've had so many calls about where uh, people can get the shoot and show, the official shoot and show cap. And heck, we'll send you one of those. And we're, we're asking $12.95 for this cap. Of course, it is fully adjustable in the back. It's a a real nice quality cloth. And this uh, logo on the front is embroidery. It's not just some stick-on patch there. This is sewn right onto the, the fabric there. And again, the Shoot and Show, mail it to us. The Shoot and Show, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana. That zip code is 71104. And just ask for the cap. The caps are $12.95. Oh, $12.95 a piece. I will get it out here. And we really think they're a bargain for what they are. And, you know, you can actually show support of the shooting show. If you don't think this is a conversation starter, trust me on this one. You walk around with a shooting show cap on, people that want, uh, who don't watch our program will say, what in the world is that? And gives them a chance for you to tell them. So anyway, friends, we appreciate everyone's support so much. You know, uh, people call and they write from literally everywhere in the country. We're getting into more and more new areas. Please call your local cable company or TV station if we're not on uh, in the local area. And please help us reach as many people as we can because it's so important. Our message has got to get out there. And nobody else is doing it but us. They're not reaching people on television but through the shooting show with our message as shooters and gun owners. So friends, help us if you can. We definitely need it. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
people, the voters are screaming about violent crime. What are we going to tell them? How about the truth? We're not keeping violent criminals in prison. Sir, oh, 35 right. states are under court order to release criminals. The average True. criminal set free will commit 187 more crimes a year. We're out of prison space. We've got to make more. Good people are getting hurt bad. With the likelihood of arrest and conviction, a murderer will spend 1.8 years in prison. Yeah, and a rapist a couple of months. I'm not in the prison building business. We're in the re-election business. Thank you. Listen, just a handful of repeat offenders commit most violent crimes. We could just stop letting them go. Well, stop giving me the facts and start giving me headlines. How about another gun control law? Yeah, we've already got 20,000 of them. It just don't work. So my gun control plan to restrict firearm sales to citizens will break the back of violent crime and rid our streets of violent criminals. <laughs> Do we have any questions? Don't let politicians get away with murder. Join the NRA. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill McIntyre with another update from Capitol Hill here at the National Rifle Association in Washington, D.C. There are four pieces of federal legislation you should be prepared to act on any day now. The first is the so-called Brady Bill, or S-414, in the Senate, and H.R. 1025 in the House of Representatives. As you probably already know, the Brady Bill has been like a chameleon and changed several times over the years. The current Brady Bill would require you to wait at least five business days in order to exercise constitutional rights. It would deny your right to immediate self-protection. It would free government employees from monetary liability if they wrongfully deny your handgun purchase. It would take police off the streets and put them behind desks, conducting optional checks and shuffling papers. And it would potentially evolve into a check on purchases of all firearms, and not just handguns. The Brady Bill would not require a background check during the waiting period. It would not keep handguns out of the hands of criminals because they rarely obtain their guns from licensed dealers. The Brady Bill would not stop crime. Two-thirds of Americans live under some form of waiting period, and virtually all their states have experienced a rise in crime. But the anti-gun drumbeat doesn't end there. Sarah Brady, the head of Handgun Control Incorporated, has said that the campaign to enact a national gun policy doesn't end with the Brady Bill. It just begins. And she's right. Semi-auto bans are part of the campaign to restrict your gun-owning rights. Senator DeConcini from Arizona and Representative Charles Schumer of New York have introduced S-639 and H.R. 1472 to ban many semi-automatic so-called assault weapons. These bills would give unelected Clinton cabinet members, like the Secretary of the Treasury and the U.S. Attorney General, the power to recommend other guns to be banned. The campaign against your guns and the future of our rights goes further than gun bans and checks. Senator Moynihan from New York wants to ban three common calibers of ammunition, including 9mm. And if that effort fails, Senator Moynihan has proposed a 1,000% tax on 9mm, 32 and 25 caliber ammunition. That means a box of $10 ammo could cost you $100. It's clear that Sarah Brady is right when she says the campaign to enact a national gun policy doesn't end with the Brady Bill. And that's why law-abiding gun owners can no longer wait to protect our rights. Those rights are at risk in the United States Congress. You can't afford to wait. Act today to protect your rights and call your representatives and senators at 202-224-3121. I'll be back next week with another NRA update from Capitol Hill. And now for this week's portion featuring Lieutenant Colonel Art Alpin, retired, formerly of West Point, and he has some information for us I think we're all really going to appreciate. Art now has the great A-Square Company, and of course they build some of the finest high-powered rifles and ammunition available in the world today. A-Square is located at One Industrial Park in Bedford, Kentucky. That phone number is area 502-255-7456. Firepower is normally meaningless and sometimes used by people who don't really understand. In fact, firepower consists of three separate and distinct components, volume of fire, combat range, and terminal effect. The history of small arms technology is the history of developments and advances in the three components. Since any weapon gains in one component at the expense of another, it also concerns the design trade-offs involved, how these trade-offs were incorporated into tactical doctrine, and how they affected the outcome of battle. Volume of fire is the number of rounds that a well-trained operator or crew 
can efficiently and accurately fire in one minute. This includes sustaining the fire for some period of time and putting the rounds on target. In a manually operated weapon, the soldier is the primary limiting factor in volume of fire. Automatic weapons are not so easy. All automatic weapons have a cyclic rate of fire which is an expression of the speed at which the mechanism functions. No automatic weapon, with one exception, can sustain a volume of fire the same as its cyclic rate, primarily because the heat of firing cannot be dissipated at the same rate that it builds up. This can seriously damage or destroy the weapon. There are ways of combating it, such as a quick change barrel, but each one brings its own set of advantages and disadvantages. As a good rule of thumb, most automatic weapons will have a sustained volume of fire somewhere between one-sixth and one-third of their cyclic rate. Combat range is expressed as a distance. Many interrelated factors have an effect on combat range. One is accuracy or shot-to-shot -shot uniformity so all subsequent rounds go in the same place that the first round did. Barrel length and velocity have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with accuracy. Accuracy is a result of proper design and precision and uniformity in manufacture. In some cases, such as the flintlock smoothbore musket, accuracy will be the practical limit on combat range. Since the 1870s, trajectory has been the primary limiting factor. Further, trajectory gives rise to two divisions of combat range, battle site range and adjust site range. This black line represents the line of sight from shooter to target. This is the barrel and front sight of a firearm. If the barrel were held perfectly horizontal, the path of the bullet would define a curve much like this blue curve. However, rifles are made such that the barrel is always pointing upward in relation to the line of sight. The bullet starts out below the line of sight travels upward and crosses the line of sight on the ascending branch of the trajectory. It passes through the maximum ordinate and then drops down on the descending branch, crossing back over the line of sight and falling away below it. In all cases, we want to aim between the breast pockets of the enemy and strike him no higher than the throat nor lower than the belt buckle. That sight setting, or angle of the barrel pointing upwards, such that the maximum ordinate is never higher above the line of sight than the difference between the breast pockets and the throat, nor the descending branch no further below the line of sight than the distance from between the breast pockets to the belt buckle, is the battle sight. And this point is the battle sight range. Within this range, the shooter need not estimate the range to the target, nor adjust his sights. Battle, sight, range. For any target beyond this battle sight range, the shooter must adjust his sights. He estimates the range to the target and sets that range on his sights. By so doing, he is changing the angle of the barrel and the positioning of the trajectory curve in relation to the line of sight.
if the shooter adjusts the sights for well beyond where his target actually is, the maximum ordinate may be so high above the line of sight that the bullet will go over the target at a closer range. Conversely, if the adjustment is well short of the actual range to the target, the bullet may pass below the target. This trajectory is much more of a curve than people think. A 4570, if fired with the barrel perfectly horizontal, will, in less than 500 yards downrange, drop more than 450 inches below the line of sight. A just sight range is that range such that the shooter can aim between the breast pockets of the enemy, make a 50-yard range estimation error or sight adjustment error, and still strike somewhere between the throat and belt buckle. Beyond the adjust sight range, the target can still be hit. However, range estimation must be more and more accurate. To review rapidly, battle sight range, the range within which all targets may be hit between throat and belt buckle without sight adjustment, and adjust sight range, that range within which aiming between the breast pockets will result in a hit between throat and belt buckle given no more than a plus minus 50 yard range estimation or sight adjustment error. The curve of the trajectory is very important. Anything which reduces the drop of the bullet and thereby flattens the trajectory will result in an increase in both battle sight range and adjust sight range. There are two primary ways of doing this. One is an increase in muzzle velocity, and the other is an improvement in aerodynamic efficiency. A bullet traveling downrange is constantly decelerated by air resistance. A round nose bullet will suffer great deceleration. By streamlining the nose of the bullet into the spitzer shape, the designer significantly increases the aerodynamic efficiency and reduces the loss of velocity. This aerodynamic efficiency is generally expressed as a decimal number called ballistic coefficient. The higher the ballistic coefficient, the more aerodynamically efficient the bullet. Other factors besides accuracy and trajectory affect combat range. The leader and the user of the weapon have the ability to change some of these. Training and acquisition of a sight picture, adjustment of sights, and range estimation will have a direct effect on combat range. If the shooter can hold a small error in range estimation and sight adjustment, or is trained to spot the fall of his rounds on the ground and use that as a basis for further estimation and adjustment, the adjust sight range will be increased. Before we leave combat range, one other point must be made. It is not uncommon to find sights graduated to 2,000 yards for weapons which have a four or 500 yard adjust sight range. The numerical graduations on the rear sight are no indicator whatsoever of either battle sight or adjust sight range. About the only exception to this is the British Army in the period 1905 to 1914. They were amongst the finest military marksmen and could use their weapons out to the limit of possible sight adjustments. 
The most important of the three components of firepower is terminal effect. Terminal effect concerns the destruction of a target given a hit on that target. This will be covered in greater detail in another tape. I urge you to keep the components of firepower constantly in mind. They are necessary for tracing the development of small arms. Further, every weapon cartridge combination has a unique blend of the three components of firepower. This blend gives it certain advantages and disadvantages in relation to any other weapon. In no small measure, the tactical outcome of battle has been decided by the advantages and disadvantages of one nation's weapons against another, the leader's understanding of what those advantages and disadvantages were, and how to make them work for him. In future tapes, combat range and volume of fire will be shown on a standardized chart format such as this. The blue bar indicates the battle site range, while the orange bar is the extension for adjust sight range. The volume of fire will be given as a number. In all cases, these are based upon a test and analysis of the weapons involved, tempered with the best historical evidence available. In sum, the three components of firepower are volume of fire, combat range with its two divisions, battle sight range and adjust sight range, and terminal effect. They are essential as threads of continuity in the study of the history of military technology and its relation to the outcome of battle. The Shoot and Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, for the absolute best in monthly shooting magazines, turn to Shooting Times. They have all sorts of excellent features on handguns, rifles, shotguns, and black powder by some of your favorite gun writers, such as Dick Metcalf and Rick Jamison and Bill Jordan, just to name a few. Each month you'll find interesting articles on guns, shooting, reloading, and new products for the firearms industry. That along with information on pending legislation of interest to all gun owners. For subscription information, call 1-800-727-4353. Shooting times, the best there is. All right, friends, we're going to come back to our bench here and uh, with our all-important spotting scope. We have our uh, Colt Sporter and Mini-14, and we're going to be shooting down at uh, a couple of targets down there at about 90 yards. Uh, 85 to 90 yards is truthfully about as far as I can shoot uh, pretty accurately with open sights uh, on small targets. We don't have scope mountings for these guns today. So we're going to try them down there at between 85 and 90 yards uh, with a couple of different types of ammunition and let's just compare them. But it is such a pretty day out here. I wish every one of you could be here with us shooting because I think you would really enjoy it. Well, friends, let me take our magazine out of our Colt Sporter. Uh, as I said earlier, these guns are missing the bayonet lugs because you've really got some people in government and in the media and some of these organizations who don't have a clue as to what these guns are, even what they're for. These are tremendous home defense guns. I tell you what, if they weren't good defensive guns, why would the U.S. military be using them? And why would a number of other countries in the world, and the way things have gotten now, we never know when you or I may have to defend our home. Not just our country, but even our home that, that was unheard of just a few years ago. Now we're having to face things that none of us ever thought we'd have to. 
and taking guns away from us, especially tremendous guns like this Colt, is just ridiculous and we cannot allow it to continue. We're going to be giving you uh, the method to contact your congressman in a little while on the program and please get a pencil and piece of paper, please write that down. I'm giving you warning now, go ahead and get your pencil and paper. Anyway, this is your standard Colt Sporter. It has your standard weight barrel. And I'll tell you what, friends, there's a couple of things that Colt uh, really knows how to do. One is, in fact, build uh, how to build 1911 pistols. And the other is, believe me, they know how to build these Sporters slash AR-15s. Uh, the quality on this gun is just exceptional. And I think you're going to find most of the Colts are at least equal to this gun as far as quality goes. They shoot so well, you have the uh, heavy barrel models available. You also have a new model where the carrying handle comes off and it's good for uh, mounting a scope down closer to the bore. Uh, and these are just excellent pieces of workmanship. And of course, don't let me forget to mention our Ruger Mini 14, which is, is a very fine gun in its own right. Uh, the Mini 14 and the AR-15 or Colt Sporter are in, of course, the same chambering, and we have 20 round magazines for both of them today, and we're sure they're unloaded, but they work on a different principle. Your Colt has a gas rod, literally, that comes out of the top of the barrel, and uh, your gas uh, directs or acts directly uh, on the action, back uh, uh, turning open the locking lug so the action can function. The Mini-14 has a fixed piston and uh, when the bullet fires gas pressure causes this rod just like very similar to how it works on the M1 Garand in fact that's why it's called a Mini 14 the mechanism is similar and it causes the operating rod to come back unlock the bolt and to pick up another cartridge out of the out of the magazine these guns are very different in how they work but they both work extremely well back in Vietnam a, uh, there were a good number of complaints about the AR-15, but most of those complaints, I believe, according to our research, they had a lot of ammunition problems in Vietnam. I picked up some information somewhere that uh, somebody who was selling ammunition or gunpowder to the government had some powder that had was really dirty. It left uh, a lot of of dirt and crud in the operating mechanism and cause these guns to jam. Also, the first information uh, that I received back, oh, in the mid-60s on the AR-15 when I first found out about these guns, uh, it was thought at that time they might not have to be cleaned as often as some of the mechanisms. Well, that was exactly wrong. These guns have got to be cleaned like anything else. Now, friends out here on the shooting show, there's not a lot that we haven't seen as far as firearms goes. And I don't care what it has been, you can make anything that's semi-automatic, uh, you could even make revolvers jam, and I have seen every type of semi-automatic, and I'm sure I'll get some letters on account of this, but at one time or another, I have seen every last one of them jam. So there's always a condition, or uh, uh, certainly with faulty ammunition, you can make one jam on demand, but there are always conditions that these things will not function under. So what we need to remember on semi-automatics is we want to keep them reasonably clean and always use good ammunition. And the semi-automatics are not as tolerant of reloads when you're reloading, the, especially a cartridge like the 223. You want to be sure that you have a powder that's compatible with your gun's action. You also want to use the small base dies so they can function, can slide in and out of the chamber easily. So if you're using a bolt action, you can get away with just neck sizing on the empty case. But on these semi-automatics, and in fact these and all the rest of them, you need to really uh, take a lot of care in preparing or resizing your, your uh, cartridge case. Anyway, back to the drawing board. Let's go ahead and shoot. In fact, I think we'll shoot our our Colt Sporter first. We're going to use a couple of different types of ammunition. We have some Hanson. Uh, this is 55 grain full metal jacket ammunition in 223. And Hanson is made in Israel by the Israeli uh, military industry. And that's their sign there. And I tell you what, friends, 
if there's anybody that knows how to make good ammunition, I believe it's the Israeli. And of course we have some Federal, and of course Federal is one of my very favorite brands anyway, we have some 223 Remington, a 55 grain soft point. Now friends, we've actually just run out of time. We're going to have to come back to our rifle shooting next week, which of course we will do. Meanwhile, we need to give you some really important information. Because what we have got to do, we have got to start these letters and phone calls to the U.S. Capitol, believe it or not. Uh, you can do that by mailing to your congressman or to your senator. Uh, you can put the honorable whoever, U.S. Capitol, House or Senate, Washington, D.C. Now, the zip code for the House is 20515, and the zip code for the Senate is 20510. If you don't know who your representative is, and a lot of people don't, you can call area 202-224-3121 and give them your zip code and they can tell you who your U.S. representative is. Now friends, this is no joke. I mean, these people literally are planning to take away our guns and they're going to wind up wanting everything that shoots that we own. They really want to do this. We have got to take some action. We'll be talking about letter writing and things on future programs, of course. But anyway, this is how to do it. Uh, you can get in touch with your congressman or your senator. So please make a note of this. Friends, we sure want to mention Shotgun News, Post Office Box 669, Hastings, Nebraska. That phone number is area 402-463-4589. Shotgun News, the trading post for anything that shoots. Three big issues monthly with thousands of firearms bargains. MasterCard or Visa subscriptions only, 1-800-345-6923. And if you're in the Arklatex area, remember Britain's for all your shooting needs. Britain's 517 Louisiana Avenue in Shreveport, now with another location on Hollywood. Friends, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of the Shooting Show. And remember, if you have something going on in your area, maybe myself or Kurt can possibly get up there with a camera. So please let us know. If you forget our phone number, it's in Shreveport information under the Shooting Show. Area 318-222-8515. Until then, we look forward to seeing you next week on another shooting show.